Alright, in a good mood today, and that's good because we're going to be continuing on with Soul Blazer. Uh, hopefully I won't get too distracted this time. We'll be finishing up the snow mountain snail area today. Not too much left for it, but... Oh, and more slimes. Yeah, I was just watching the uh, Scum of the Earth uh, Valentine special, which was sadly taken off YouTube, but uh, unfortunately so. It was a really good episode. And honestly, I think it's another false uh, positive on the friggin' DMCA thing. I mean, seriously, Nostalgia Crit Critic has a Cool World episode up, and it's fine. But really, Scum of the Earth... I think it's a case of a company hitting a group that's small and hoping and you know, thinking, oh, they're not going to be able to con contest it. So shame on you creators of Cool World. Not just for making the game, the movie, though that's bad enough. <laughs> shame on you for picking on the people. But enough of that. Okay, we just got... Yeah, let's get the, the herb on. Let's not get the herb on. Okay. Now, this is a neat little magical spell. It'll basically just keep going around you and hitting. It's not too powerful, but it's good when you get surrounded. It's also good for those stupid bats. Especially when they get synchronized with the spin of your little uh, glowy orb thing. Okay, first enemy in this area are uh, evil trees which shoot ice at you, but always in a little cross pattern, so. Yeah, I, I don't... <laughs> More teleporting wizards. Just with different spells this time. Oop, and... There we go. There's not a great deal left to unlock, but... Uh, as you probably noticed, we're kind of hoping to find more of those master emblems. There are eight of them total, and if we can get them all, magic doesn't cost anything. I know I said magic is like kind of situationally useful. I've also mentioned the Phoenix magic. You get it. You need to get it at the very end of the game. Yet yeah, you need that to beat the last boss. There is. Well, we'll see when we get there. But I'm pretty sure there's no way to beat it otherwise. Okay, purple wizard. Not much happens since last time. Uh, watched a few horror movies. The Void was pretty good. The Witch sucked. Thinking that might just be because it reminded me just a bit too much of a Scarlet Letter, which I hated. I always felt that they, uh, the term classic applied to literature can be overused and sometimes I don't know, some books that we've labeled as, cla as classics, I really think should be critically looked at and be like, oh, maybe it doesn't quite deserve that. I'm not just saying that because I'd like to see my own book become a classic, though I doubt it will be. My I'm, a, I'm a fantasy author. I put my works as sort of in the same uh, field as a... Uh, not saying caliber, just saying like on the same shelf as a... Uh, Stuff like Dragonlance or Forgotten Realms. I'm trying to build a universe like that. It would help if I would uh, spend more time writing and less time commenting over old videos of like gameplay. But we just work with what we got, I suppose. But yeah, on that point, I know people who will uh, argue that The Hobbit is not a, is, isn't a classic, and that just blows my mind. As a fantasy writer, I can't think of another fantasy novel. Or fantasy series in regards to Lord of the Rings that I would call more classic than that. Sword of Shinar, oh, the Shinara series maybe though. I found the Sword of Shinara was a bit dull. Elfstones is really good though, and that, that's the one that the TV series is based off of. I don't know. There's some I find in a lot of liter literal circles. Fiction, like fantasy and science fiction, are kind of viewed as, um, again, not by everybody, but just by kind of the more snooty element, as being uh, instant pulp. 
They would see, use the uh, reverse argument that I would. Basically saying, well, where's the symbolism? Where's the meaning? That's what makes these books like Moby Dick classic. That's what makes the Scarlet Letter such a fantastic book. Is the symbolism. Whereas I've always felt that the symbolism overpowering is more important than the story itself, you failed as a story writer. To me, a book's first purpose should be to tell the story. Okay, we got another gem. Oh, oh. I think we're right at the boss. Um, looks like we got plenty of video time. Oh, well. Let's see. And that's all I want to do with my books is entertain. And I'll say that right now. If uh, in the future you ever, if I do manage to get some uh, success, and then anyone's like, "Oh, hey, Michael Wilbur, he wrote that book, and that was totally a metaphor for the Gulf War, uh, the Gulf War, or the 9/11, uh, or the rise of the friggin' of ISIS, or whatever they call themselves." Yeah, you can call bullshit on them. I, I <laughs> there's no symbolism. There's a big prologue at the beginning of the first book that explains that there's no symbolism. That it's just a story. I wonder how many books are actually really like that. Even ones that we label as classics. Now, we've, now we have all these huge these meanings and the, this deep insight into the book. But how many of those do you go back and talk to the author? And like, well, no, I was just telling, trying to tell a story about a... Uh, Oh, that's a good one. I just want to tell a story about a, like a mad whaler. Ultimately, that's why I kind of felt that the um, Scarlet Letter failed. It, that book is solid symbolism. Everything. Just... Ugh. not saying you can't like it. I'm sure there are books I've read that you wouldn't like. And at the same time, I kind of blame the, the idea that certain books are classics, but... Well, they're all like ancient books. They're books that have been around for hundreds of years, or... Well, at least a hundred years. For a long time. And, um... Well, the problem is people's mindsets change. I get it could be useful to go back and kind of see the old mindset, but at the same time, I'm thinking of an argument here and I can't quite get it to my mouth. Uh, probably because of this red wizard. No, okay. <coughs> I guess this is, I feel that people are kind of pushed away from reading because instead of giving them like, you give them like eight classics to say, read one of these, and then read some of these other books that are more recent. They say, here, read all these old classics and appreciate them. And if you don't appreciate them, you're an old, cult old cultured swine. And yeah, I've, I've run into people who've had that attitude. Like, oh, if you don't like this book, you're uncultured. You just don't get it. <laughs> I was talking about Mass Effect, uh, the ending of Mass Effect 3 once. It's not that I don't get it. The argument that you just that maybe you just don't get it isn't really valid. We get it just fine. If it sucks, it sucks. <laughs> and I've actually read other books I felt would fit well into the classics while still being possibly interesting. It would inspire people to want to read more. Stuff like uh, Ray Bradbury, Something Wicked This Way Comes. Fantastic book, fantastic story. Movie adaptation was kind of okay, but kind of surprised it came from Disney. Oh, we gotta be getting close to the end now. I guess an interesting topic. If you found yourself in my rambling videos, which I know must drive some people insane, just the fact that I go off on such tangents, but, um,. Uh, if you do find yourself here in the comment section, I'm not going to ask you to like or subscribe because, I, for one thing, it annoys me when other people do that. But uh, just throw a comment on about a book you would add to the, to uh, the list of classics.
book your dad's there and why your dad is there. Now me, I think if I could add a book to what's called with the list of classics now, I think it would have to be House of Leaves. Just for being such a unique book. Well, there is some, a lot of symbolism in it. It does still tell a very definite story. Mind you, it's not an easy read. So that, that, whew. I first heard about it from uh, the ARG, uh, the Ultimate Reality Game slash YouTube series, Everyman Hybrid. Which fits, because they actually have some very... House of Leaves things happening in that uh, storyline. If you ever heard, heard of House of Leaves, the basic concept centers around uh, people moving into a house and discovering that the, there's a door at the back of the house that opens to a hallway that shouldn't be there. That measuring like the distance inside the house and the outside of the house, it should lead into the backyard. Instead, it leads into a dark, dark hallway. The thing is, the book isn't told necessarily from that family's perspective. Or from the people, the person who's investigating it. It's from the perspective of somebody who's picked up the notes of the guy investigating it. And the ultimate mystery being that, despite all this evidence the guy seems to have pulled up, none of it seems to be real. Like, he goes to look up the sources, and the sources have seen nothing about the house. This is a very interesting book and very weird and uh, a little more a little more expensive too. I remember I had to, I had to order a copy. And I want to say it cost me fifty bucks. Hardback, admittedly, but uh, worth it. Okay, finally at the boss, which is a Merv thing. I remember this one being kind of difficult because this pattern is a little hard to get behind. And I think I just used my green herb, so I'm probably dead. <laughs> okay, the trick is that second fireball is really hard to avoid. But, one, avoid the jab. So it come down like that, and that's your opportunity to jump up and smack him a few times. But it's actually hard to do when he's in the, top, the middle position. It's best to do it at the side here. But you want to make sure you move out of range of his spear in case he switches hands on you. I think if you turn to the side right in the middle, you might be able to smack him too. But the, then, again, you're right in front of the spear. Rock in a hard place. Okay. I've got the power bracelet on. I should probably have the defender bracelet on. So. Oof, my health's bad. I'm doing pretty good, though. Man, it's taking off a lot of health, though. Probably should just, yeah, just avoid them altogether. You yeah, won't stay near the middle, though, so you can avoid the the, sec the two shots after he uh, does the spear attack. Right here. Oh, there we go. Oh, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I got this. Let's see. Nope, don't stand there. No! Dang it. And there go all my gems. Uh, oh well. I guess I'll need to get the green herb. I shouldn't really get a green herb. I should have gotten a green herb, I should say. I... Oh well. I was pretty close though, so maybe maybe if I just pay attention to the pattern a bit better this time. Spear down. Avoid the fireballs. How much set up? Uh, yeah, it should be fine. It's a shame magic is a waste of time. You know, we finally reached the bosses where uh, they don't have blue meters anymore. They've got different colors you got to wear down. Legend of Mana did that, too. Still kind of leaning towards Legend of Mana for my next series. That's going to be a big one, though, because that's, that's a long game. A lot of side quests. Okay, God dang it. I gotta be more careful than that. I don't have a healing herb to save myself. Okay. I 
strange how many bosses... Well, I guess it's not strange. How many bosses have the pattern recognition thing? Pretty much every boss in existence. Even really tough ones like the Demi-Human from uh, Digital Devil Saga. Mind you, most of them don't have cycles where if you screw it up, they instantly heal themselves back all the way. Or if you have a certain ability equipped, they just flat out kill you. Let's see. I almost picked up Final Fantasy XV recently. Uh, I don't know. I've heard it's a good game. It's got good reviews. I've got friends who've played it. Again, friends of the elsewhere, Wong Fo Lee suggested it, uh, gave it a good recommendation. But something about it, I just, I don't know. I, oh, got him, good. I think Final Fantasy XIII was so disappointing, I just, it took a while to get used to it. Oh, damn, the king. Okay. I wonder if the king will have the stone. Oh, they were all equipped, okay. Well, oh, there's one monster lair, lair remaining here. Better find it. Though it might be a uh, dream thing. Okay. I don't think this area had any metal monsters or spirit monsters. Okay. Well, we'll talk with the king first. That's the important thing. I'm excited for anything. I think a Covenant, the new Alien movie, is not too far off. Interested in seeing that. I'm pretty forgiving as movies go, though. I actually kind of like uh, Alien Resurrection. Hudson Hawk, a movie a lot of people hate, is probably one of my favorite movies. Oh, yeah. Uh, need those three red hot items to get the Phoenix magic. Uh, don't have to worry, though. You have, if you've got this far, you haven't found anything yet. I think there might be one piece in this area somewhere. But for the most part, I think actually the last piece, you need to go through the last area a good bit. So, yeah, you haven't passed it yet. Might have passed a few emblems. But mostly because of the metal monster thing, which we're not too far off uh, from getting to that sword, actually. Oh, there's a gnome. Okay, insert joke here about what kind of machine you think would uh, summon evil. I'd go with the computer, because it's hard to get more evil than Twitter, but uh... Oh, there's a silver stone. What did this kid do to get in jail? Yeah, see the metal sword. And a sleeping mushroom. It should bring us back to the other area. Oh, and technically, yeah, that's the last, um... The last thing, uh... <laughs> the last enemy base, so I just took it, I think. We'll go back and check it, but, um... Okay, that takes care of that. Let's go ahead and grab that. If I get too uh, lost in thought, I could very well forget about it and have to go all the way back for it some other time. Then again, it could be like two gems again. Boy, they do that a lot. Let's see. Should be over here somewhere. There. That's to the boss. That kind of looks like it. Right here. Okay, it opened up this whole... So. Okay. Hang on, didn't I see... Uh, yeah, there's an enemy base over here. And more bats. That's right, I'm out of gems. Dang it.
It was like this in Zelda, too. It was really annoying then. Interesting point. The Nintendo Switch. Haven't picked one up yet. Kind of debating it. I honestly don't feel like I've done much with my uh, Wii U. And, uh... I should've. I should've. There's, uh, I've got games I haven't finished on there. I was meant to check out the uh, Mass Effect version that came out for it. Just for the heck of it. I mean, I know that they didn't have, doesn't have all the good stuff from the uh, other versions. Which is kind of a shame. Ah, here we go. All this trouble for a snail in a room that has no entrance. Huh. Well, I guess we'll figure that out in a minute. Uh, yeah, we're done here. Off we go. Also, I, did, I guess it does show that the uh, enemy base count in dreams doesn't reflect the enemy base count in reality. So, uh, the more you know. I think all we got left is to go talk to that thing, so we gotta figure out a way to get to it. First we need to figure out where it is, though. Ah, okay, yeah, they do live just a year. You think Death Toll tried to bargain the king down on them? Well, just a year, uh... Oh no, we're talking about a man who, who kidnapped trees, so uh, never mind. Okay, we gotta find where that poor snail got stuck. Well, it's not over here. Uh, oh, there it is. Okay. Uh, how do we get to it? Okay, it could be a hidden wall, maybe? Maybe the snail can ram it down. Yeah, probably not. Let's give him a full rotation, though, just to be sure. Should mention right now I've got a uh, Undertale Ever Deep Two up, wrapping up another chapter, I'm trying to wrap up the book. <laughs> I mean, this is essentially the same story attached to the Mass Effect Slipstream stuff hard to work on because it's hard to justify working on fan fiction when I've got so much original work to do. Oh, maybe this was wizard lady will, uh... No? Uh... Yeah, we already know that. The thing is, I've got this Lipstream series, which is, uh takes place between the end of, uh, like, 400 years after the Mass Effect trilogy, but before Andromeda happens, technically. Oh, I think there might be a secret passage. Oh, yeah, right there. So I went down. Yeah, there we go. And he gave me... Ooh, a Master's Emblem. Sweet. Means we've got three of them. Five to go. Okay, I think we're pretty much ready to go to the next area. I can blab about those fan fictions next time. Actually, no, we're going to the house in the desert. It's actually kind of an interesting level. Let's bounce over there, and we'll call it a day. It's literally just a house in the desert, which we will explore in due time. You need to notice the areas themselves do kind of clean up after you've been through them. Oh, well. Pick it up next time. Have a good one.